So I just started a brand new niche site, and so I thought it would be a good idea or a fun idea to talk about all the tools, the tech, and the plugins that I use to get a brand new niche site off the ground. And just a quick note, while I won't be sharing this site and URL on YouTube, I will be sharing the URL and everything else that goes into building a niche site inside of my premium blogging community, SEO Next Level. The doors open up on March 21st. I'll leave a link in the description below. So this is a blogging membership that features weekly training on SEO. We have live Q and A's. We have an SEO coach in a Facebook group. I do member audits of actual members' websites. Um, we have a free keyword research tool in there that's available to members. And I'm doing behind the scenes videos of my new niche site. So if you're interested in that, again, I'm going to leave a link to the wait list below this video. All right. So the first thing that any new site needs is web hosting. And no, don't worry. I'm not going to tell you to go sign up with Bluehost and drop my affiliate link. So I get a hundred dollars every sign up. I've never used Bluehost. I will never recommend Bluehost. The only people who are recommending you to use Bluehost are interested in making affiliate commissions with Bluehost. And not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but let's not talk about Bluehost. So which hosting do I use on a new niche site? WPX Hosting. I've been using these guys, I don't know, seven, eight years. Literally, I think every niche site or blog that I've launched has been with WPX Hosting. They're just an incredible host. They've got phenomenal speed for site speed. Their customer support is literally the best customer support I've used for any industry with niche sites or blogging. They're super, super helpful and extremely responsive whenever you open a support ticket and their pricing is reasonable as well. Don't quote me on this right now. I'm not looking at the screen, but I think they're anywhere between $25 per month or even if you sign up for a yearly plan, it's around 22 bucks per month. So it's definitely reasonable pricing, great speed and fantastic support. So WPX hosting is definitely my number one host. All right. Number two is your theme. So there's a lot of great WordPress themes out there and I've used some of them like Cadence, Astra, Generate Press. There's some good food specific themes and I don't want to, I don't want you to get too caught up in which theme you use. But for this new niche site, I'm using the Trellis theme by Mediavine and I have to say it's incredibly fast. So for this niche site, I'm trying to get it. Site speed is becoming more and more important for SEO. So that's what I'm focusing on with this theme. And I must say this theme is incredibly fast, passing all the core web vitals really fast loading time. It's customizable. So the Trellis theme for Mediavine, I've installed it now on two different niche sites. And I definitely recommend looking into it if you're starting a new site. All right, number three is WordPress plugins. So again, my focus with a brand new site is on speed. I want it loading really, really fast. So I don't overweight my site with a lot of bloated plugins. To start off with, I'm using three plugins on this site. That's it. Number one is Yoast. That's for SEO optimization. Number two is WP Rocket, just for the caching, because the Trellis theme takes care of a lot of the stuff that WP Rocket does as well. But just in terms of straight caching, I have WP Rocket on there. And then kind of my newest favorite plugin is called Link Whisper. This is for internal linking. It is a paid plugin, but it's totally worth it. It allows you to kind of automatically set up internal linking on your site. So when you publish a new post, you can tell Link Whisper with you know different keywords, go internal link to all of these other posts on my site based on the keyword automatically, right? Internal linking is incredibly important for SEO, but it's a huge pain in the butt to manually have to go and add those internal links. So definitely look into Link Whisper. So again, those are really the only three plugins that I'm launching this site with. If you're looking into kind of list building, I use Thrive Leads for my SEO site. But other than that, I like to keep it lean. I like to keep it fast. Um, short pixels, a plugin I would normally use, but again, I'm letting Trellis take care of those images as well, which is another reason I love the Trellis theme is because I don't really need short pixel. But anyway, Yoast, WP Rocket, 
in Link Whisper for my plugins. All right, number four is my logo. So I know a lot of bloggers like to get fixated, fixated on the look of their sites. You know, what does it, the design, and they spend a lot of time on their logo. I think ultimately actually design and how your site comes across as being polished is important, just not at the beginning of launching a site. So I use Canva to make very basic logos. Um, and I used Canva for this newest niche site. I just use text and kind of a, you know, an image or a, an icon or a logo, whatever you want to call it. And that's it. And I throw it up on my theme and I call it a day. It takes me literally less than five minutes. So I use Canva for my logos. Again, when I'm just starting a site, I'm not worried about the design. I'm worried about getting a fast theme and fast hosting and then getting a lot of content up quickly, which I'll talk about next. So in terms of logo, I use Canva. Again, I do think once your site starts to become established, once you start to rank and get more traffic and actually try to build an audience, then maybe investing into maybe a custom theme or, or a custom development of your website with a professional logo, maybe hiring a designer, I actually don't think is a terrible idea later on down the line if you want to invest that money. But when we're just starting a brand new niche site, Canva is totally fine for our logo. All right, number five is content. So we've got our site set up, we've got our hosting, we've got our theme, we've got our logo and our plugins. Where do we get that first bit of content? If you're not writing your content yourself, if you want to take the least expensive route, then certainly write your content yourself. You're not gonna have to pay anybody to do that. It's just gonna take you a bit of time. I prefer to invest upfront in written content. So I like to outsource. For this specific site, I found a writer on the pro blogger job board. I've used that quite a bit in the past with good success. So that's kind of the first place I look. I've been testing out a writing service recently for a different niche site. It's called Passion Post. And the quality they've been delivering has been pretty good for a pretty good price. So if you're looking for hands-off management with a content agency just taking care of everything um, for a reasonable price, I'm not going to give it my full 100% recommendation yet because I haven't used it enough. But I will say it's worth a test article to see the quality you get back. Again, that writing service is called Passion Post. If you prefer to work with a writer one-on-one, -on -one, then I would look into ProBlogger. What I will say the benefit of working with a writer one-on-one -on -one is you're not going to pay for that middle management or you're not going to pay for that overhead, right? You're paying the writer directly one-on-one, -on -one, whereas with a writing agency, you're paying the agency who has to pay the writer, so you're kind of paying both of them together. The other benefit of working with a writer directly is you can give them direct feedback. They can learn exactly what you're looking for. You have that open one-to-one -one communication with the person who's actually writing your content, whereas with an agency, you're usually in touch with more of a project manager who's overlooking your account, and they manage the writers, and you're not going to have that direct one-on-one -on -one contact with the writer. All right, number six is software. So in order to do our keyword research, because we want to start off a brand new niche site, at least I like to do with at least 50 article ideas, 50 keyword ideas. And for that, of course, I use Ahrefs. That's my go-to keyword research tool. I don't even have an affiliate link for Ahrefs, but I've been, using, I've been using them for years. If you have the budget, I would go with Ahrefs. The cheapest plan now, I think, is $99 per month, I'll be using Ahrefs for kind of just low competition brainstorming keywords, right? Where you want to type in a broad seed keyword and get back a list of low competition keyword ideas. I have created a custom tool just for members of my SEO next level membership that's available to all members totally for free. Now, I'll be honest, this is nowhere near as robust as Ahrefs, but it does the job where, again, you plug in kind of a seed keyword and the tool will spit back a bunch of low competition keyword ideas. The other piece of software that I'm using is Jarvis, or I think they renamed it to Jasper. So this kind of falls in the content bucket as well, but I'm including it in software. I have a video about Jarvis. So this is AI writing 
software. And this, what this helps us do is create first drafts for content really fast, especially if you don't have the budget to outsource writing, you can use Jarvis or Jasper to, once you learn how to use it, to create decent first drafts really fast. That's how I like looking at Jarvis, not as a all-in-one solution, but more as a first draft writer. So Jarvis is really good for that. And then finally, we're using Surfer SEO, which is an on-page SEO content tool. What this basically does is you copy and paste your entire article or first draft into Surfer and it will use, you know, it's very complicated, but it will give you an SEO score based on your written content compared to the content that's already ranking in Google. It'll look at things like word count, what words and phrases you're using, what topics you're covering or not covering. It's really good for uncovering gaps that you just didn't include in your content, right? If you're writing a post about the best credit cards for travel, for example, and you didn't write anything about the annual fee, okay? So obviously that's something you would wanna include in a post like that, but if you just forgot or your writer forgot, Surfer SEO will highlight those gaps and say, hey, you're missing this topic, you're missing these keywords, and if you want your topic to be as comprehensive as possible, um, that's where Surfer SEO comes in. It actually does quite a bit more than that, but that's the main use case that we um, use it for. So whenever I'm launching a new niche site, that's kind of everything that I'm using to get that site off the ground. If you liked this video, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Whenever you're starting a new niche site or new blog, what are some must-have tools, plugins, or tech that you can't do without.